Joining me now, Ken Klippenstein, uh, reporter for The Nation, uh, obviously a former contributor to TYT, uh, and overall swell guy. Uh, and also a bit of a jokester uh, on Twitter, uh, and he did it again. Uh, we're gonna talk about serious topics, but first, fun. Uh, so poor Rich Cannell, uh, what did you do to him? Uh, and, uh, and, and why should he have known better? <laughs> <laughs> so Richard Grinnell was uh, President Trump's appointment to uh, acting director. Remember, President Trump doesn't like to get uh, Senate confirmation. Uh, he's not big on uh, co-equal branches of government, thinking Congress should have some say in what goes on. Uh, but in any case, he, he put uh, Richard Grinnell in as acting director of national intelligence, which is a very high ranking position within the intelligence community. This contains within it the CIA, National Counterterrorism Center, all of these very spooky agencies that are given extraordinary power. Um, and <laughs> it being Veterans Day today, I just was, you know, at a few moments and just kind of as a uh, goof, a troll, if you will, I sent, <laughs> I sent Grinnell a uh, picture of William Calley, uh, the convicted uh, killer in the uh, My Lai massacre in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. And, and this, this story sort of um, emblemized a lot of the, uh, you know, horrible uh, uh, crimes against humanity and 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 you know bloodshed in, in that war. And I said, oh, you know, here's my here's my grandpa. Uh, can I get a retweet for him? He served in Vietnam, and I even described him as Bill Kelly. And he ended up retweeting that, which was sort of scary because it's like, well, this guy had all this power in you know this very high level intelligence agency, and he doesn't know basic facts about history about the Vietnam War that uh, you know plenty of high school kids could tell you. I was sort of freaked out to be honest. Yeah, um, one of these days you're gonna get him to do a shout out to Genghis Khan. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> who'd you get? You got Steve King to do a shout out for Colonel Jessup. That's right, from a few good men. That was, and I was amazed. I was a little horrified by that too because that's Jack Nicholson in one of the most iconic scenes <laughs> in American film. Like what? <laughs> um, all right, maybe we get him to do a shout out to Lewis Cipher. Um, you remember that? I don't know. You is probably too old for you, but the, the Robert De Niro, um, not Cape Fear, the one before Angel Heart, where I, Robert De Niro plays the devil. Uh, <laughs> so think about that one next, okay? Uh, my 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 grandpa Louis Cipher, uh, from down in Louisiana. <laughs> anyway, um, so on to serious stuff. Uh, I I didn't give you a. a, a we're warning about uh, this topic, but uh, let me just dive into it and see uh, what you've got. So um, the Trump got rid of Esper. So Defense Secretary Esper, uh, he wrote was terminated on Twitter, and that's how he fired him because that he that's the kind of clown that he is. Uh, tell someone else in the government, go through a process, don't just tweet it. Anyway, uh, but then. Uh, Four other officials were either fired or resigned, including Esper's chief of staff. The chief of staff is not surprising, but uh, and also the policy uh, head was, and he replaced by a, a well-known lunatic, Anthony Tata, or as I once called him in an interview, Tata. Um, anyway, so uh, you cover national security issues, Ken. Uh, is there reason to be concerned about four senior officials at the Pentagon being replaced by Trump in the lame duck session when he has not conceded? Absolutely, and this is the attitude of folks on the inside, and not just you know partisan Democrats. Uh, I have sources with access to what's going on in these agencies telling me uh, that in addition to that, uh, he reassigned the General Counsel of the National Security Agency, the NSA, which does all sorts of sophisticated wiretapping and signals intercepts. Uh, you know, generally overseas and on military adversaries, but they have extraordinarily powerful. I mean, they're probably the best in the world at this. Um, they reassign a general counsel. That's the lawyer that kind of says, "Here's what's legal. Here's what's not legal. Here's how we conform with um, you know American law." He got rid of him too. And what I'm hearing from folks inside is that um, you know they they have concerns that uh, this means that the administration might try to leak signals intercepts to allies in Congress. Uh, and it's not clear exactly what about whether it's about Hunter Biden or it's about you know so-called Obamagate. Um, but when you get rid of not just the general counsel, the NSA, but as you said, the Secretary of Defense and his chief of staff, and you put in a chief of staff that's extremely um, you know uh, simpatico with the White House and uh, with Trump world in a way that the Defense Secretary they appointed was not. I understand the Defense Secretary they put in isn't quite that bad. 
But what I'm told is that the chief of staff actually has the authority to work with the NSA to disclose these types of signals and intercepts that they're getting. Um, and you know, these are guys that are in a position to know about this kind of thing. I haven't, you know, had enough time to, uh, you know, suss out specifics about what is exactly going on. But that's a general impression that I get that there's some spooky stuff going on uh, that the president wants to do. That's not just, um, uh, you know, uh, trying to get back at people that he didn't like. Maybe he had some personal vendetta with, um, with, with Esper. No, it appears to go beyond that. Yeah. So. Um- can it, it looks like there's three possible options. Uh, and by the way, for the folks at home who are wondering, well, why why are you saying a former Brigadier General like uh, Anthony Tata is a well-known lunatic? He, uh, I can prove it to you guys. He uh, called Obama a terrorist leader. Uh, he thought he that he Obama was a Manchurian candidate working for Hamas, like cuckoo for cocoa puffs, like total full-blown lunatic in charge of policy at the Pentagon as we speak. Um, so, and by the way, he threatened to murder uh, the former CIA director John Brennan, including by hanging and it's and shooting him in the head. Just totally nuts. Uh, so now the three possibilities can for why Trump is bothering to replace very important people in national security. Uh, one, which I find hilarious, is oh he wanted to get rid of Esper because he disagrees with him on a policy about Afghanistan, and then there's the general policy about. You know, uh, NSA, et cetera, and any kind of policy consideration. The idea that Donald Trump right now, barricaded in his bunker, desperately trying to cling on to power, is doing moves based on policy is so funny that, again, you'd have to be nearly Kata to believe such an insane idea. There's no way it's because of that. So we're moving on to the other two possibilities. And one is what you're saying. What signals are you intercepting? Who are you giving it to? There's a theory that uh, he really needs uh, the F-35 deal with the United Arab Emirates to go through because of what he promised them and what they might have promised him either earlier or after he stops becoming president. Um, And then of course the second theory is he's moving people into place just in case. And so uh, I'm worried that a coup is not at all, it's not, Definite, it's not even close to likely, but it's on the board. <laughs> Why the hell would a lame duck president be moving these really important positions in national security when he's got 70 days left in office? Yeah, I have no idea if the signal stuff I described is by any means the only thing that they plan to do. That could be one of several things that he's you know, seeking to do. That's just what I was told and what I happen to know about. Another concern I would have is, is he gonna do a quick targeted strike on Iran or something like that? Could he target? Uh, you know, uh, uh, facilities where they're developing uranium. Could he do something in the you know last stretch that he had, uh, and the Republicans had sort of uh, signaled to uh, you know Israel that they would help with? Um, that's something that I think is extremely concerning. Uh, and so none of this is mutually exclusive. It can be all of the above. It could be that he had a personal problem with Esper as well. All of those things are possible. Um, but uh, what we have to remember no, is that no, even if can. So the personal problem with Esper is real, uh, and but it spawned from Esper saying, "No, I'm not going to use the military right. inside America, and I'm not going to use it against their own citizens." So I mean, it's those two things might be connected. But if it was just Esper, I wouldn't even think that it was an issue. But getting rid of four people plus the guy at the NSA, no, that's a plan. Uh, as much as Trump can plan anything, and so that's then we got to uncover why is he doing that because that's coordinated. I agree with you, and I and and um, what's interesting about the NSA general counsel? That's a very technical, you know, position for a person to have, and for him to get rid of someone in a position that you know that's not someone we see on TV every day. That's not someone ordinary people think about. I would venture a guess that President Trump doesn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about the, um, you know, technical side of things. If he's getting rid of him, yeah, that seems to suggest that there's some sort of plan afoot. And from what I'm told, um, there's resistance even from William Barr about what exactly is going on. And that is extremely frightening because William Barr has been, uh, you know, more than happy to assist Trump with surging Department of Homeland Security resources to uh, locales where the, the uh, state and local officials didn't want them. For example, uh, the protests in Portland, they sent uh, federal units there against the wishes of state and local government. So if, um, as I'm told, Barr doesn't want to go ahead with whatever it is going is going on, that should be a big red flag, I think. Wow, if Barr is not on board, that means it's full blown mental. We're not just talking about authoritarian tendencies. 
We're talking about something deeply troubling. I mean, Barr has said yes to everything you could imagine, including what a lot of people, including me and all rational people, if you ask me, think were serious crimes. And he was okay with all that. And he was okay with just now saying yes, the Justice Department will get involved in local elections, which is unprecedented. If Barr has drawn the line, can I, okay, look, I guess let me ask you this. I don't have to ask you if we should be really concerned. I'm already really concerned. <laughs> um, so just a last quick thing, dive into the signals thing. What is, I don't know what that means. I understand sending the, selling the jets, the UAE wants them. They, they then do a real estate deal with Donald Trump after he leaves office. That's a possibility, we don't know that, but okay, that's at least, Plausible given what who Trump is. Ku is crazy talk, except he is crazy and he always tests his limits. And maybe he's testing his limits. It wouldn't work anyway, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to get into that. But what does it mean to, to take the signals and who would he? I still don't get who he would give it to and what he would get out of it. Yeah, so when I say signals, I mean um, hacked phone calls, hacked emails, the sort of stuff we saw with the Edward Stone disclosures, what the NSA is capable of doing. What we've seen from Trump and uh, his associates over the last several weeks, right up till today, is the repeated assertion that we are going to declassify everything as his son said. We are going to release the truth and you will know the truth. And whether or not these documents say what he thinks, what what you know he's claiming they do, he appears to believe it. I don't think that he's lying when he says that he thinks that this stuff is going to show some kind of um, you know huge uh, 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 scandal or something. So uh, the, the problem with that is when you release these cables, that can, uh, you know, if you're using sensitive sources, if you're using spies to get these kinds of things, that could get them in big trouble. Not to mention the privacy implications and the politicization of these extremely sophisticated systems that um, were never, you know, uh, supposed to be used for partisan ends. So uh, it's extremely frightening, and I think that it can be connected to the concerns you raised about a coup, because maybe he thinks that this stuff can, you know, vindicate him or uh, make uh, Biden look illegitimate or. Uh, make the election look illegitimate. I don't know. All I know is that that's um, uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, w what appears to be part of the plot here. When you allow the government to spy on everyone, uh, as Snowden uh, showed and proved, and then you get a guy like Donald Trump, and then you get a guy like Donald Trump with no brakes left in the car, who's absolutely desperate. That is a recipe for disaster. Uh, and now he's replaced the professional in charge with one of his cronies. Oh boy, buckle up, brace for impact. I don't know what kind of damage you can do in 70 days, but we might find out. All right, Ken Klippenstein from The Nation, thank you for joining us, we appreciate it. Great to be with you, Jack. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.